time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, the travel shows are so popular, um, and um, since I can only be in one place at one time, or so it seems, um, I had put out a, a, a cry or a, um, a plea to, to the friends and the viewers that if they go on a trip, to please uh, take us along and uh, film for us. And so we've been really lucky. We've had uh, international reporters, and we've been to Yuma. And today uh, we're going to go to, uh, uh, to the western part of Arizona and some other goody places uh, with our friend uh, Lori Johnson. And she, um, uh, she, there was a winter vacation for her, and I'm going to introduce you to her real quick because she's going to tell you in two or three words how come it was a journey instead of a trip. And uh, so we have a lot of footage. We have a lot of things to take you to. So I'd like for you to uh, say hi to Lori Johnson. How are you, Lori? Just fine. Thanks for having me. Yeah. A lot of work you did for us there, huh? Well, it actually was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So... And uh, what we did is, instead of just going straight down I-5 and going straight to see our relatives, we decided to take some side trips and see some of our national parks. Uh -huh. So it entailed seven states, a lot of national parks, and a lot of nice, fun experiences. And it was good for us because uh, no, I don't have to go there because we've already <laughs> taken you there. So I think without any delay, uh, we had so many inserts. We spent several hours on, um, so without any delay, we're going to go right along with your trip that um, turned out to be a journey. Okay. Cool. So, this is Flat so Stanley, and he went we on our trip with us. Stanley. What started out to be a trip, later to be a voyage. The whole purpose of Flat Stanley is he's a third grade class project out of a Renton school that he's sent to stay with people and to travel with people for one week. And then things are sent back to the school, and the children then look up where Flat Stanley has been, and they learn a little bit about geography and where Flat Stanley has visited and the history. Behind him here is Mount Shasta that you see. This is where we started out in Grants Pass, Oregon, on the Rogue River is where we stayed. And then onto the Rogue River, you'll see this is one of the jet boats that comes right in front of the Riverside Inn and will pick up passengers and take them up the river. And they will have one, even two day excursions which is also quite interesting that they still deliver the mail this way by jet boats, not this particular type, but another type. And that's the only way people get their mail. And this is what's really interesting about the Rogue River. If you stay at this particular resort, you have bridges on both sides of you, and on the opposite side, right where you're looking, right where the flag is, there's actually a park that you can go. And so there's so many festivities and so many things that people can enjoy, even if you do not stay at the resort. But it is unique that one direction of the road will go through Grants Pass on one side of the river and back on the other side, as you'll see that bridge. As you can see, this is really a fierce animal. Um, this is my, my bass and hound white that comes with us and travels. Um, what we found quite interesting, though, that the Indians that lived along the Rogue River were termed fierce, and that's why they were frequently referred to as the rogues, because of their willingness to fight for their rights. Also, too, Josephine County, which this, um, the Rogue River and Grants Pass lies in, was the only county in the state of Oregon in name of an honor of a woman, which her name was Josephine Rollins. Okay, well, that kind of goes along with uh, the Rogue Castles that we just showed you here a few weeks ago. Your vicious dog, wow. Now this is um, in Sacramento. This is right where the American and the Sacramento River fork and they actually meet. And it was a beautiful, beautiful park down below. And people are actually fishing down there and they catch quite a few fish and other types of just relaxing activities go about there. Now this is the state capital of California, which is Sacramento. Um, beautiful, beautiful building. Actually, Sacramento is known to have one of the most versatile type of architecture in the United States. So we decided to take Flat Stanley here so he could see the capital. Well, yeah, the capital was sliding here. So it'd be in Sacramento, and we just watched 10.5. I guess we got Stanley here to hold up the capital, huh? <laughs> So true. So true. 
Okay. And here shows a little bit of the versatile architecture of Sacramento, which was one of the reasons why we wanted to go there, is to see the different types of buildings. This is just one example. There were so many and just not enough film in my camera. Oh, time on this show. And um, this was here was taken up at Yosemite's village. It was one of the very few ravens I've actually saw in my life. And he just sat there and watched me. And as I got closer, he actually flew away. So I just got him in flight. But I was quite fascinated actually being able to see one because around here we only see crows. Now this was also up at Yosemite's in the village. This is the Awani Hotel, known to be one of America's most beautiful hotels. Um, the scenery around it was absolutely breathtaking with the snow still on the ground in the fields. And this time of year it's very unusual to see the wildlife that we did see during that time. Now this is Flat Stanley. This was after our day going up to Yosemite Village, up at Yosemite National Park. As you can see, he's just relaxing next to the Merced River. And in the next picture that you're going to see, you'll actually be able to see the trout down in the river. Now this is the Merced River, and as we were looking down over our balcony, you could see trout actually swimming down there. Unfortunately, with a photo, all you're seeing is little black specks, but they're actually quite large fish. And again, too, this is an area where you must catch and release, so you can't actually take them and cook them up. Oh. Too bad. <laughs> now, in the springtime, the size of this rock is about the size of a Volkswagen. And what we were told during the spring melt-off, that these boulders are so loud that you can't even hear the water, which at that time was loud, because of the, the rumbling and the rolling and tumbling of these huge, huge boulders coming down the river as the spring melt off. But again, you can see the size of one of these, and it might not be there next year if they have a big, huge flood, and it will wash it down. Now, as you can see, this is the actual entrance into Yosemite National Park, and so it is quite a limited for size, so not all rigs, especially if you're taller than 13 feet, are going to be able to get through here. Oh, but I didn't get through there. I'm 10-something. Well, cool. then, then you're lucky. You can yeah. make it then, Lillian. How interesting. And again, you'll see Flat Stanley down there on the roadside. Okay. Well, there's Stanley sitting, well, up the side of the highway. Now, this is coming out of Yosemite National Park, coming and heading west into El Portel. And as you can see, there's a rock. We called it duck rock because it looked like a duck. But there's a sign right before it. It says 13 feet 6 inches. If you're any taller, you're not going to have the top of your rig left. The reason they call it duck rock. This is this is <laughs> according to Lillian here. It says duck. You got a duck. I never thought <laughs> of that one. <laughs> well, actually, in Canon Bache, they have the hangover rock. And uh, it has to do with margarita. The original name was margarita. And of course, drinking a lot of margaritas, you get a hangover. <laughs> so they called it, um, mar oh, I'm sorry, I'm telling it backwards. It's margarita rock, and they named it the hangover because after the, so it's a duck rock. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Now this is back at Yosemite Park and Yosemite Village again. And as you can see, Flat Stanley, he's pointing to a gray scroll just right behind, right below his left fingers. I don't know if you can see him. He's kind of small in the picture, but he was big in person. Now, this was taken at the very beginning of March, but you can still see the amount of snow on the ground and then the waterfall in the background. There wasn't a lot of melt-off, and as it comes closer to spring or later on, like this time of year in May, April or May, you'll get bigger waterfalls because of the runoff. This was just one of the, the sites that put a smile to our face. We figured, and we called this the smallest house on Highway 140 in California. Check out the size of the truck compared to the size of the house. And in person, all you can do is smile or laugh looking at how somebody could actually live in that little house. Well, Stanley could have. Well, this is true. Good point.
There's your windmills. I kind of kind of bleeping because I brought them in as far as far as I can. Quick, yeah. quick story you hear? Yeah. Well, actually, in Tehachapi, this is one of their sources of power, which I found quite fascinating because it's so windy through those rocks and through those mountains between Bakersfield and Needle, California. Mm -hmm. We know about the wind. Okay. Okay. Now we're in Parker. Now this particular dock that you're seeing here is where we actually pulled up and we ate lunch. Um, my father and my stepmother actually have a winter place there that they stay in and they have a party barge that they can go to the casino, they can go to swap meets, they can go shopping and of course then they can go to lunch. So this is where we went to lunch and in the background Yeah and that was the end of the club it, oh, look, isn't that pretty there? That, that piece of the clip actually gave us a hard time, didn't it, Miss yeah, Laurie? It yeah. did. Do you remember why? Yeah, because I kept getting my fingers in the way. <laughs> fingers, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, Every time I put the, the picture up on mm -hmm. the board, I was taking them down too, too fast or not fast enough. So. Oh, well, let me fill you in on a secret. What happened is you didn't take a camera, did you? I didn't take a movie camera. No video. No, yeah, no video. You, all this was done off of Instamatic, Instamatic throwaway disposable cheap cameras. We so. did, yeah. yeah. And so, but it came out really, really good. And um, so, with a little magic, we turned it into a movie type thing. Anyway, we got a long ways to go. So we're going to go to the next clip, um, which is longer than this one. And we're going to where we're we going. From Parker, um, I think we go to Phoenix in that area. To Phoenix. Yeah, that's where the um, UFO goodies and everything comes in. So enjoy. And uh, um, with our next clip going to Phoenix and, and beyond. On. Yep. All the places I'm not going to take you to because it's just not safe for me to go there. OK, are we ready? Cool. Oh, Arizona and California, are. some of the most fertile agricultural land and they have such a big versatility of the different crops that they grow from cotton to lettuce, cauliflower, broccoli and of course they're known for their dates and their peanuts there also. I got dates, didn't I? They're good? Yeah, they were they? Yes, they were. Cool. Now Yuma is also home to the territorial prison there in Yuma which I believe you just did a show on. Not yeah, so we did a whole show on that on the prison, so. You wouldn't want to do anything wrong there. I don't think they did. Uh, if you remember all those graveyards, a lot of people died there. You bet. See, those special effects are on your photograph, and we are now where? This is the Sonoran National Monument. Um, we actually looked for a monument, couldn't find it, so I guess that the cactuses themselves must represent the monuments themselves. I don't know, I see something in my little leaf.